Hi, my name is Bryn Bosslett, and I am an infectious disease doctor at the University of California, San Francisco. And today, I'm going to be talking about the diagnosis and treatment of group A strep pharyngitis within the group A strep pharyngitis module. The goals for today's session include for you to be able to create a differential diagnosis for pharyngitis, to describe the screening criteria and tests used for the diagnosis of group A streptococcal pharyngitis, and for you to be able to name the commonly prescribed antibiotics for group A strep pharyngitis and explain the importance of antibiotic stewardship. Pharyngitis, also known as sore throat, is one of the most frequently encountered complaints in the outpatient clinic, resulting in about 2 million ambulatory visits in the U.S. annually. Group A strep is the most common bacterial cause of pharyngitis, but viral causes are overall much more common, especially in adults. There are also many non-infectious causes of pharyngitis. Unfortunately, the signs and symptoms of group A strep pharyngitis versus other etiologies overlap broadly. The optimal approach for differentiating among various causes of pharyngitis requires a problem-focused history, physical exam, and appropriate laboratory testing. As already mentioned, bacteria are an important but actually less frequent cause of pharyngitis. However, the reasons to accurately diagnose and treat group A strep pharyngitis include the prevention of complications such as acute rheumatic fever and peritonsillar abscess, the improvement in clinical symptoms, and the reduction in the spread of disease to close contacts. In addition to group A strep pharyngitis, other notable bacterial infections that are linked to pharyngitis include Neisseria gonorrhea in sexually active patients, Haemophilus influenzae, which causes epiglottitis, Clostridium diphtheria, especially in the non-immunized or remotely immunized patient, and Fusobacterium necroforum, which is an anaerobic infection associated with peritonsillar abscess in young people. Although the clinical symptoms of bacterial and viral infection may overlap significantly, most bacterial causes of pharyngitis are not associated with common cold-like symptoms, such as coryza, which means runny nose, conjunctivitis, or cough. Viral illness is in fact the most frequent cause of pharyngitis, responsible for around 50% of all cases. Unlike bacterial infection, viruses are often associated with coryza, conjunctivitis, and cough. Tonsillar exudates may be seen in both bacterial and viral infection. Some notable viruses associated with pharyngitis include corona, rhino, and parainfluenza viruses, which are all associated with a common cold-like illness, adeno and respiratory syncytial virus, which often affect children and infants, but immunocompromised adults are also vulnerable, herpes simplex virus, Epstein-Barr virus, which causes infectious mononucleosis, and acute HIV, which should always be considered in anyone presenting with a mononucleosis-like illness and the appropriate risk factors. Finally, there are many other non-infectious causes of pharyngitis that should be considered, especially if the pharyngitis is more chronic or has atypical features. There are two methods of group A strep diagnosis used in clinical practice, the throat culture and the rapid strep antigen detection test. The throat culture is the gold standard test for the diagnosis of group A strep pharyngitis. Sensitivity for detection is approximately 90% and specificity is over 95%. Additionally, bacterial culture might point to an alternative etiology that may or may not require treatment. The downside to throat cultures is that they typically take between 24 and 48 hours to result. On the other hand, the rapid antigen test detects the presence of group A strep carbohydrates on a throat swab and takes only about 10 minutes. It also has reasonably accurate results. One large study found the rapid test to be 83% sensitive and 93% specific for the diagnosis of group A strep pharyngitis in children. 
Given these benefits, the rapid strep test has gained widespread acceptance in clinical practice, particularly for ruling in strep infection. Please note that neither conventional throat culture nor rapid tests can accurately differentiate acutely infected persons from asymptomatic streptococcus carriers with an intercurrent viral pharyngitis. Nevertheless, these tests are useful because they allow physicians to withhold antibiotics from a great majority of patients with sore throats for whom the results of culture or rapid strep test are negative. When deciding whether or not to perform a diagnostic test for a patient who presents with acute pharyngitis, the clinical and epidemiologic findings should be considered first. Efforts had been made to incorporate the features of acute pharyngitis into a scoring system that attempts to predict the probability of infection with group A strep. The Centaur criteria were first proposed in 1981 by Dr. Robert Centaur for use in screening adults with sore throat who presented to the emergency department. He found four clinical features were correlated with group A strep infection. Fever, enlarged or tender cervical nodes, tonsillar swelling or exudate, and lack of a cough. The more features present in a patient with sore throat, the more likely the patient was to have group A strep pharyngitis. Later, age was added as an additional factor. Children and adolescents are at greater risk of both having group A strep pharyngitis and of developing its sequelae. So patients under the age of 15 receive an extra point. Conversely, adults age 45 or older lost one point. Centaur's criteria recommend testing for group A strep pharyngitis at the two-point threshold because this correlates with a greater than 10% risk of group A strep infection. If a rapid test is positive, antibiotics should be administered at that time. However, recall that the rapid strep test is only about 80% sensitive. If a rapid test is negative, the story gets a bit more complicated. A confirmatory throat culture should be considered in these cases, especially for children and adolescents, given the higher prevalence and risk for complications in this population. In adults, the data is somewhat less clear, and throat culture may be deferred in some cases. In Centaur's schema, patients with three or more points were recommended to receive empiric antibiotic treatment without the need for diagnostic testing. However, studies of the effectiveness of this recommendation have shown it to be associated with significant antibiotic overuse. There's some disagreement on this still today. The American College of Physicians continues to endorse empiric antibiotics based on clinical criteria, while the Infectious Disease Society of America recommends treatment only in the setting of a positive diagnostic test. As you can see here, even with four or more positive criteria, the risk of group A strep infection is still only around 50%. In terms of antibiotic choice for the treatment of group A strep, it is one of the few bacteria that remains very susceptible to penicillin, and penicillin is the drug of choice. This can either be dosed as a pill taken several times per day or as a single intramuscular injection. Several studies have shown that another class of beta-lactam antibiotics, the cephalosporins, are equally effective in resolving the infection and may be even better at eradicating the organism from the pharyngeal tissue. However, the relatively higher cost and overly broad spectrum of the cephalosporins makes them less ideal than penicillin. For patients who have experienced an allergy to a member of the penicillin family, alternative antibiotics include azithromycin or clindamycin. There is no need to retest patients to ensure group A strep eradication and no need to treat close contacts of sick patients unless they also develop symptoms. A word about the downside of empiric antibiotic therapy. As physicians, you will be confronted time and time again with a decision to administer versus withhold antibiotics. It can be very tempting to prescribe an antibiotic to cover the possibility of bacterial infection, even if it's very unlikely, especially when facing an anxious patient who just wants to feel better. But remember, an important goal of your job is to minimize the potential adverse effects of inappropriate antimicrobial therapy. 
It is estimated that fewer than 20% of all patients with pharyngitis have a strong indication for antibiotics. Here are some data to think about. Almost all cases of group A strep will resolve spontaneously without sequelae, especially in adults. Symptoms tend to disappear within three to four days of onset, even without antibiotics. Also, several studies have shown that antibiotic therapy can be safely postponed for up to nine days after the onset of symptoms and still prevent the occurrence of negative sequelae, such as rheumatic fever. This allows time for culture data to come back. Furthermore, a recent study found that rheumatic fever in the U.S. is becoming even more rare, affecting less than 1 in 100,000 cases of group A strep. In terms of overall symptom relief, antibiotics may help people to feel better sooner, but only by approximately one day or even less. Finally, although reducing the spread of infection is an important goal, patients are typically non-contagious within 48 hours of symptom onset. Many patients will not have seen a doctor prior to that time. Please keep these facts in mind when seeing your patients with a sore throat. Thanks so much for your attention.